I'm going to try to do this with just limited battery on the microphone, so if the battery dies, I'm just going to yell real loud, okay? How you guys doing? You guys doing good? Yeah. A lot of exciting things happening today. People walking out new identities, new transformation, and that is exactly what we came here for, to find out who we are. That's what Chloe said, to find out who God is and who that makes us. So just a little bit real quick, if you don't know me, I am, uh, as Lisa said, Pastor Johnny Bowers. Um, I, I oversee the School Transformation full-time level one, the first six months, and it's awesome. I love to be able to be the man that, w that brings strangers together and become friends. So I'm the gatherer, uh, along with my awesome friend Ashley Fletcher. I don't know if she's in here or not, but she's awesome. Um, yeah, so I've been here uh, for eight years and some change, and this is my first time speaking on a Sunday. Um, so I've hit the pinnacle, I think, of uh, things to achieve at the Father's house. Um, no, it's a, it's a true honor that Steve would consider me uh, to speak to you guys on a Sunday morning uh, because I know how much he cares and loves for you guys. It is it is uh, an amazing honor, an amazing privilege to be an overseer of, of people and the directions of their uh, direction of their lives. So thank you guys so much. Um, and thank you, Steve and Vicki, because I know that they're watching. <laughs> like a hawk. <laughs> Which is good. So it's really cool that that uh, that Ryan just said something that 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 struck me because it's kind of kind of something that we're going to talk about today. So what we're going to talk about today is is uh, distractions that keep us off of Jesus, because that's where we're supposed to be, right? Our position is supposed to be present with God. He lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And if He doesn't live in you, you should ask Him to come. Live inside of you because it's amazing. But when we get off our eyes off of him, even just for a little bit, we all know that if you're off a little bit, eventually that becomes a lot, right? We're way out here by ourselves. And so I'm going to read, I'm going to read something in Acts and this is, this is who we're supposed to be. This is the men and women that we're supposed to be. The men and women that people look at it and say, man, those are Jesus people. They've been transformed. They have an identity that not, not, we don't just quote Jesus. We actually embody Jesus. So in Acts, in chapter 4, we're reading about Peter and John, and they've been arrested for speaking for speaking the name of Jesus, for teaching in the name of Jesus, and people are getting upset because they're causing an uproar. They're like, man, these guys, we got to put them in jail. And so this is uh, in verse 13, chapter 4, we read, uh, it says, Now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Are you somebody that people would recognize there's something different about you? Are you somebody that has not just the words of Jesus memorized, but the way he lives his life? How does Jesus live his life? Think about that for a moment. How does Jesus live? Not rushing around? Not distracted? Not in anxiety or, or, or unrest. He walks in perfect peace. He walks with the Father. He knows who he is. He doesn't get his eyes off. See, when we get our eyes off, that gives room for all kinds of things to come in and distract us and get us off course. We start giving our, our attention to these other said things, whatever it may be. And then you start to feel the unrest come. You're no longer seated with him and present with Jesus. You're in this 
distracted place and you start giving you, because you start to feel like, you guys ever just feel that like you're tired all the time? You know, work is just like, oh my gosh, another day, another dollar, right? Jesus has been doing a huge work in my heart this last few months. He has been constantly erasing the things that I could say are the distractions that I use as the excuse for frustration in my life, for chaos, for unrest. He's been revealing them, and I'm like, man, it's another one after another one after another one. I thought, I thought that I couldn't love myself until I, was, until I lost some weight, and I've lost weight, and I do love myself a little, I do love myself a little better. But it's something inside of me that's unrested. So then I think, what else can I blame it on? The house is a mess. Right? That's it. Everything else is the excuse for me getting my, fo- my focus and my un- I'm unrested. I'm pl- I walk in this place of just like, I don't look like Jesus. And I don't ever want that to be the case. I don't ever want to say... I'm a pastor and I walk differently behind closed doors or outside of the, of the church. I want to be somebody that, said, that when people see me, they say, clearly, these men have been with Jesus. This man has been with Jesus. He walks in peace. He walks in calmness. He's not constantly in a hurry. And trust me, I'm all about getting down and getting some, getting some work done. Let's get, let's, we got stuff to do. We got stuff to do around here. But what is your posture in that moment? What is your heart? Where is your heart in that moment? Is it rested? Or are you in constant just chaos in your mind? Be thinking about that. So I'm going to read some some Jesus to you guys because that's what we do on Sunday mornings, right? And before you tune out, Pay attention. If you're on your phones, don't be on your phones unless you have to take notes. Don't be slipping social media in there. Okay? Don't be looking at your Gmail. Don't be texting. Everybody you need to talk to is in this room. We'll be all right. Okay? My phone's turned off right now, so. Jesus... um, He's in the Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking to people, and he's giving them just, he's just giving them gold. He's just giving them not just words to memorize, but things to live by, things to live by. And I, and I want to just challenge you that, are you living like Jesus? Are you living like him, or are you just read about it and say, oh man, that would be nice, but that's not for me. I could never attain that because of X, Y, Z. Well, you don't have two screaming kids, Jesus. You don't have all these deadlines to meet, Jesus. All these reasons, all these excuses that we come up with, all these things that we have to go get done, all we we have to go get, go get it done, go, 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 go. We're distracted. Our eyes are off of him. And I'm not, I, this, is, this is me loving you guys. I'm saying, hey, like, let's wake up. Let's be present with the Lord. Let's be with him. It doesn't have to be just 25 minutes in worship on Sunday morning. You could do that right now. Let's just do it real quick. Just close your eyes real quick. If you're at home, just close your eyes. Watching online. And just feel the presence of God around you. Say, Jesus, I need you. I need to feel you. We just take that second to just be still with him, to just be calm and quiet with him. I want to be like that in the midst of my busy work day. I want to be like that in the midst of something happened that went wrong a blown out tire on the freeway? Do I go to frustration and anger? 
or do I go to? Well, whatever. Peace. Let's get her done, Jesus. Let's do this. In Matthew, uh, in Matthew 11, verse 20, uh, 28, it says, Come to me. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? I'll give you rest. Come to me. Are you going to Jesus? In Acts, we just said that, we just read where he said, these men have been with Jesus. They have, came, they have come to him. Have we come to Jesus or do we just read about him? Do we just know facts about him? Or are we present with him? We need to rest with him. And in the first service, I, I bursted people's bubbles because I said rest isn't just time off. Rest isn't vacation. That's not what I'm talking about. And I don't think that's what he's talking about. Rest is being able to be in a position of a posture of knowing that Jesus is with you. You can endure the things that you have to do because you're with him. And let's read on. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. How's your soul? You know, we all, we ask that in inner healing. How's your heart? How's your heart? And all the men are like, good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. <laughs> You're just stressed to the max. <laughs> just stressed. Right? It's like, just, just be real for a second. Jesus is, Jesus is the most manly man there is. And he said that there's rest. Come and be with me. He says, take my yoke upon you. A yoke, do you guys need to know what that is? Do you guys know what a yoke is? Raise your hand if you don't know what a yoke is. Okay, somebody doesn't know what a yoke is, so I'm going to do it, okay? It's a farming tool that they use to pull plows. So they, they, it's like a big old huge wooden thing that they put, uh, they put around the, the big oxen, and then there's a little oxen that they're trying to train up to learn how to carry this thing and, and, be, uh, and, be, and know how to do the job. But he can't do it himself because he's too small. He's not strong enough to do it. And so Jesus is using this because they would understand that in that time of farming. They didn't have big green tractors like we do now. They had oxen. And they, he was using this as an example to say, link yourself to me. Link yourself to me. And I'll give you rest because it's like, how much easier is it to carry something when you have a partner with you? How much easier is, and I, you know, I, I use the example last service of carrying a, a box that's too heavy. And as men, we just say, oh, it's just awkward. And we throw our backs out trying to carry things and we have to go see our chiropractor. Amen. Instead of uh, just getting super prideful, when you say, hey, can you come and help me, man? This thing is super heavy. Right? Wow, we could actually get it done faster. We could actually not throw our backs out and not break what's ever in it because we're too. <clears throat> Drop it. Take my yoke upon you. We are going to get things done way faster, way more efficient. Without, and I say faster because I'm. So, there, it, this is the, the weird thing that I'm trying to. I'm trying to do. I'm actually learning how to slow down a little bit. Confession, I'm learning how to slow down a little bit in the midst of we do busy around here because I'm learning how to be present with Jesus. I'm learning how to be with him and yoke myself to him rather than trying to do it by myself. When we try to do things by ourselves, we get bitter. We get angry. Things, seem, things that could be fun don't seem fun anymore. They seem like a job. But we're called to be Christians. We're called to be people that look like Jesus. Man, how exciting is it? And th it, this, is, this is where I'm at. I told you that, that God is taking things away from me. He, he's showing me. Once all the distractions are gone, all the things that I could blame, what's left? Just me and him. 
Just me and him. I just need to be with you. I'm sorry for not being linked to you, Jesus, and just trying to do all this by myself. Too many of us trying to be just islands of one. We need to be yoked to Jesus. There is rest for your souls. I uh, I am... I'm turning my phone off. All the th- This is one of the things that I've been challenged with by the Lord, and this is not to challenge you, but this is just my confession. I'm, I'm turning my phone off in church because I don't need to be on my phone. I'm turning my phone off during meetings because it's disrespectful to show that the phone has more attention than you do. If you're talking to somebody and you're on your phone listening and going, uh-huh, you are not paying attention to them. Imagine Jesus, hold on a second, Uh uh-huh, yeah, oh, whoops, they quit throwing stones at her, stop, right, it's like, come on, you imagine that, he was, he was present all the time for the people, he saw them. You could be in a crowd with Jesus, people are pressing around you. And he knew someone touched him intentionally. And he turned around to find out who it was, and he saw her in the midst of a busy crowd. Is that cool? But we're too distracted. And we're trying to find rest. I just need a vacation. No, yeah, you might need a vacation. That's full. That's cool. Go take a vacation. That's awesome. But you could be in rest now. With Jesus, doing the stuff. Turn your phone off, Josh. (laughs) Busted, man. We could be with him now. If we're not in rest right now, we're only going to be bet- waiting for the time that we have nothing to do and just newsflash, you're always going to have something to do. That's the delusion that we live in. Oh my gosh, just one day when I get to this perfect place, when everything's clean, when I'm skinny, when I have all the chores done, all the lists done, everything, then I'll rest. Yo, you'll be dead. <laughs> or so exhausted you won't be able to enjoy it. So let's just start enjoying it. In the midst of crazy. That's why Jesus is sleeping on a boat in the midst of a storm. He's chilling. He's hanging out. Because he knows who he is. He's not distracted. He's not letting these things get in the way. How many distra- how many- this is this is this was huge for me to realize this. How much time are you spending wasting it on things that mean nothing? Because it's been a long day, I just need to veg out. I just need to brush, I just need to mush my brain real quick and just chill. That is ridiculous. What could you be doing? Maybe nothing, maybe just sitting. People need to be bored. That's where creative stuff happens. We're trying to teach my son. He's like, I'm bored. I'm like, dude, you don't even know what bored is, okay? Go outside. Get. Go play in the dirt. I don't care. You're not going to sit in front of TV shows. You're not going to sit in front of video games. You're not going to have a phone. This was the big thing that, that, this is what started the whole phone thing with me and Lisa. Because our phones had more attention than our kids did. And that is a very hard pill to swallow. When your kid is trying, dad, dad. Dad! And he's getting mad, and then you get mad at him for him being mad. Quit yelling! It's like, I've been trying to talk to you. I'm like, man, I've been just sitting here looking at Instagram. Not even really looking, just going like this. Scrolling and not looking. Looking at emails. Texting people back. It's like, this is not important right now. Can this wait till tomorrow where we see each other and we can just talk in person? Let's just be present. I was watching this family get out of a car yesterday, 
and I was wa- and the mom and dad got out and they're going to a, into the restaurant, and the two kids get out, and the kids are like this, and one blasted a curb, and he kept walking like it didn't happen, just looking at his phone. I'm like, man, we are headed for something. And I'm not like the conspiracy guy about phones. Look, I'm all about it. Like, it, it, it helps. I like it. It could be used as a tool, but when it becomes my coping mechanism, and Jesus isn't the one that I go to, in times where I have five minutes to spare, feel insecure, don't want to talk to anybody, Why can't I go to Jesus? Why can't I just like walk around the stuff? And, and this is, I remember when I first thought, thought like this became popular, like wearing headphones when you go shopping. I was like, oh my God, it's a whole new world. I can listen to music and go shopping and nobody will bother me. But I'm like, that is so weird. You're literally, you're, you're not with people. You're in your own world. You're in your own zone. You're distracted. And what I, I would have to ask myself and you, what are we numbing? What are we, what are we escaping from? What are we putting in front of us that's causing us to not be with Jesus where he says, come to me? Not come to your phone. Not come to binge watching Netflix. What are we wasting our time on? It's cool to watch a show. It's cool to watch a movie with your family or whatever by yourself. I actually, this last year, went to the movies by myself, and it was awesome. I didn't realize it. So fun. I'm eating the whole popcorn to myself. (laughs) You ain't getting no M&Ms. But it's like, man, it's like when when it becomes... How how many of you guys have binge-watched TV shows? Raise your hand. Come on. Look at that. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Woo. Lord, we repent right now for gluttony. <laughs> Dang. You know how many hours we spent on that? You can actually go on your phone and there's, a, there's in the settings, you can see how much screen time you do each week or each day. It's disgusting. It's so bad. I'm like, holy, this isn't real. It's real. I'll tell you what, when we're at work or in meetings and our screen time is like more than the hours of work we did, that is pretty bad. That's, that's get rid of it. Ugh. So anyways, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a hater on phones. Go ahead, have phones, have social media, do whatever you want. All I'm trying to say is, for me, that was where I went to escape. That was where I went to get a false comfort. I wasn't going to Jesus. I wasn't going to him. I wasn't linking myself to him. And instead of trying to just beat this thing on your own or outdo him, I think that, have you guys ever heard people say, you walk with the Lord or he walked away from the Lord? I think a lot of us are running away from the Lord. We're literally, we're so in a rush that we're like, see ya, dude. We're, we're running past him. We are, we are leaving him in the dust because we're trying to do this stuff on our own. We're trying to break our sin things on our own. We're trying to, it doesn't matter. Put whatever it is in your equation and we need to be with him. If you feel unsettled, if you feel unrested, if you feel like you are not where you want to be, it's probably because you're, you're not linked with him. And you need to ask, we need to ask, I need to ask, and I have been. Where did I leave Jesus? Hashtag, where's Jesus? I know we're past that, but look, I'm just going to read another scripture real quick because I'm running out of time. And these, I'm not going to read all of it, but it, it, this is Matthew 6. And he's talking about, in my, in my, on, before verse 25, it says the cure for anxiety. Do you know that, that we're at an all-time high for anxiety in our culture? All-time high for stress. Things are not getting easier. They're getting harder. And we're turning to the wrong things for comfort. We need to be with him. And 
verses 25 through, through 34 are the do not worry verses. Do not worry what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Come to him. And in verse 33, just put that up. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He's talking about, don't worry about it. I know that you have finances. I know that you're having stress on your marriage. I know that you're busy. I was busy too. I was busy too. I had to walk everywhere. I had to heal many people. I did a lot of stuff. But he was with the Father. And just like I read in the beginning in Acts, I want to be somebody that, that somebody sees me and they say, man, that person has been with the Lord. That's somebody that follows Jesus. Because I can face things head on and I can have peace. I can have patience. I can have gentleness, kindness. I don't want to be distracted anymore. I want to get my focus back on Jesus. I don't want to have my, my soul out of whack, even just a little bit. And I can't do this on my own. You cannot do this on your own. You have to run to Jesus. If you're going to run anywhere, run to him. If you're going to go anywhere, go to him. He's the answer. Seek first his kingdom. He's the king of the kingdom. Run to him. Go to him. Be with him. Be somebody that, that when, when, they, when somebody sees you and they say, wow, what's different about you? Man, I've been with Jesus. He changed my life. I'm not a ball of stress anymore. I'm not a ball of chaos anymore. He wants to be with you and wrestle these things out. He wants to get rid of these things with you. Be yoked to him this morning. Amen. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.